Okay, so for layer 31, which is around frame 27, right? I added this head. And then what I want to do is on every other frame except 27, I want to take that head out. So I have to select layers 28 through 40 and turn off that frame. And then select 26 through 1 and turn off that frame because I added that asset after. But I want that, that asset on layer 27. Then I can move that head and put it in. Maybe even make it a little bit bigger and rotate it so that the head doesn't look so blurry, right? So it goes from this to this to this to this. Now in this frame, I want that head as well. And then I can move it to a different place in this frame. So that shouldn't affect where it shows up in 27. So the other way you can animate within the timeline is you can actually move floating assets. So without having to make new layers. And those are called motion tweens. Might even be able to rotate it, but I think that will rotate it for both. Yeah, it does. That's okay, I can live with it. It looks like I need to scale it down for both a little bit too. But you see how I can change the position of it slightly for each. I just can't tilt it or transform it. I can just move it. I'm just using the arrow keys. But anytime I rotate it or scale it, it's going to change it in all layers that that asset appears. All right, let's see how that looks. So I just patched that head. Because it's a little weird. this. So I might even get rid of this layer. Let's see. Yep, I think that works. Okay, so let's play it through. And you know what, just for story, I'm going to take this whole sequence that runs for 11 or 10, the first 10 panels, and I'm going to copy it and paste it and basically just repeat it after the selection. Let's just see how that plays. So it's a very delayed introduction. Then I'm just going to almost randomly delete some of these panels. Maybe mess with the timing on some of them. Make some of them point two, make some of them a little bit longer. All right, let's see. Do 
gets too jittery there. Let's make that 0.5. I'll duplicate that one and bring that back over here. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, one last thing. Once the flowers are really fully extended, I want to extend that moment a little bit. So I'm going to make that a full second. And now I think we're in business. I got to get rid of a few more of these. Okay, that's good. Let me zoom in and the flowers grow. Let me take a second now. Let's see that. Nice. And it sets to reset. Now I'm actually going to take a little bit longer. I'm going to take a full second on this very first frame too, and I'll show you why. So when it sets to reset, we can kind of take a breath. There we go. Okay, so now. I think I've got my animation. And I did all the, the final refinements on the frame. I'm going to show you a little trick that I don't think I need for this, but it can be really helpful to set to reset kind of automatically. So I'm going to save it first before I show you. And it's a simple trick of using what's called the in between auto function within the timeline. I'm done with my assets. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So if I want to continue and maybe make this animation longer and do more with it, these assets are going to continue to be useful. I could give this character wings, and I can give it an elephant trunk, and I can make it, you know, give itself a shower, all kinds of things. All these assets would still be useful. For, but for right now, I don't need them anymore. So at the end of the animation, I end up with this frame, and then I start again with this frame, right? And they're pretty close, but they're not identical. You can see there's a camera move there and the lighting changes. And I've kind of set that up. So one way to seamlessly connect your last panel with your first panel is to select your last panel, hold down command instead of shift, because command will only select the one panel, not all of them. And so I have now the first panel and the last panel selected. That allows me to do an in-between auto command between the last panel, number 42, and the first panel. So I click on that and I can say, let's just add three new tween frames, right? And all that's gonna do is crossfade the frames. So it's created three new ones, 43, 44, and 45. On all three, both the top layer and the bottom layer are turned on but at different opacities. So you have 75 here and you have 25 here. To make it a true crossfade, I need to take the bottom layer and put it at 100% opacity for each one. So that really it's just the top layer that's slowly fading out. Okay, and then this is what we get. It's like a little slow motion effect. That's kind of a nice way to set to reset. In fact, that might not be so distracting. I might keep it in. It's not part of your storyboard, but it's just a, 
an easy way to tween between your first and last pound. So the last thing, if I'm going to do that, I just want to take a little bit of a moment before I do that and stay here for about, let's say, 0.8 seconds. And I'm going to slow this moment down, make that like 0.5 seconds. So let's see how that ending works now. So just lots of little tweaks. You can spend a long time doing this kind of stuff. Good. And I'm going to take that beginning and I'm just going to make it 0.8 seconds instead of one second. And then I think that's going to be everything. And just look at that transition. Good. Does it show a transformation? Yes. Does it show something that I've created from before in the class? Yes. Good. Does it set to reset? Yes. Okay, so all of that's good. I'm going to save it. This is my animation stage file for assignment five at full resolution, and it still works. It took 30 layers, right? one which was like a little patch layer, and it outputted 45 frames. So that means there are 15 frames here that aren't made from solid layers, that are animated on the timeline. Basically duplicates of other frames played at different times or, or multiple layers that are held at different opacities together. And that gives me just more animation, right? And it's a cycle that takes maybe four to five seconds, you know, to get through all the way. I don't think a GIF animation should be more than 10 seconds usually. All right. So now, now that I've got that saved, how do I save it as a GIF, as something I can play online? I have to go to File. I have to go to Export. And then I have to go to Save for Web Legacy. So this is for old web browsers, right? This is an old technology. The graphic interchange format, the GIF format, was the first image format for computers. And it's limited, like old computers are limited, to only 256 colors. We're lucky it's limited to more than just green and black. Now, the problem is, if I try to just output it as a GIF without reducing it first, watch what happens. It takes forever. The GIF is going to be a nightmare because it's over a gig large. So, doesn't work so well. So I need to cancel that. I should have remembered that. But you'll see why. Because this is at 350 pixels per inch, at 8 inches tall. What we want is to change that to 8 inches tall by 150 pixels per inch. And not save that in our PSD, but just do that to make the GIF. And honestly, I'm just going to quit Photoshop <laughs> because it's it can't handle it. Oh, there, it finally comes up. Okay. But luckily, I, I saved my stage right before, right? And that's going to save all of my animation stuff. So I'm going to reopen it up. Come on. And then I'm going to change the image size down to 150 pixels per inch. 